Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, this is episode two of the top end rebuild on the tenacious Yamaha TDR 250 of a 1990, no, sorry, 1988 vintage. Um, we've already in the previous video installed the pistons, we've done the ring gap check, installed the pistons, lubed everything up on the, on the little end bearings, all that kind of stuff. And on this particular video I'm going to show you how to replace the power valves. That's basically the components that raise and lower the height of the exhaust port to give that TDR250 that much wider and usable power band compared to the non uh, power valve two strokes of the earlier days. It makes them a lot more rideable and a hell of a lot quicker. Okay, uh, Ben has, sorry Ben's my son, he's the owner of the bike. Ben has gone out and bought brand new power valves and uh, that's the part number there look. Okay, and they are handed, the other one's got a different part number to it. There's the part number for that one. And he's bought all new seals, so there you go, there's one of the seals, uh, sorry bushes. There's one of the bushes, there's a, another bush, and oh god, there's another bush, and uh, lastly, that's the other the other bit that goes, you know, the other bush that supports the, the other power valve, and he's bought a new quadrant for where the cables connect, and that's, unfortunately, that came from Yambits, because Yamaha didn't have any left, so that's the Yambits part number. And what else? Oh, you got the seals there. Okay, so we've got the seals here. Look, there'll be three seals. I think they're all the same part number. 110, 110. Yes. So that's the seal part number. And you're going to need three of those to do this rebuild. And just a very quick recap. I know some of you already heard this, but basically uh, the bushes wore out on this particular bike. The power valve started floating around, and uh, the right hand one hit the right hand piston and damage the piston, damage the bore, obviously the power valve was already shot anyway because it was worn out on the bushes and the bike seized up, back end locked up, threw Ben off the bike, much to his disgust. So we're doing a complete top end overhaul, not just new pistons, rings, rebore, we're also doing power valves as well. So let's take a look at, uh, well the, the right hand head is already stripped, so I won't do that one. Let's start with one that's still intact. And this is the left, sorry, left, this is the left hand barrel. And I mean you can see on there or not, but can you see that the, the end of the power valve, which connects to that quadrant, is really badly rounded off. It's lost all its shoulders. So where that quadrant fits on, this was the one of the problems with it, it's not really very positive. You know, it moves around and there's a lot of slop. It should be a nice sharp cut piece of uh, metal to fit into that slot on the quadrant and it isn't it's got all these sort of burrs and it's lost a lot of its material down here and that basically meant that the power valve the positioning of the power valve wasn't correct you know it wasn't maybe opening far enough and it wasn't closing enough there was too much slop on the mechanism and that would have uh, drastically reduced power output power port and performance and Ben was telling me that he just couldn't get the front wheel up in third gear anymore that tells me he's trying too hard. But no, it tells me the bike was a bit down on power because man, this thing did shift. The engine was uh, sent from New Zealand all the way to the UK to be uh, tuned by the infamous Stan Stevens. So this bike has in the past had a lot of engine work done to it um, to improve power output. And he probably skimmed the head and we've skimmed the head as well. So I'm hoping there's still enough room for the pistons to make it all the way to the top and then back down again before they crash into the head. Only time will tell. Okay, right, let's have a look at this, uh, This, which one is it? The left hand barrel and get this power valve taken out. Okay, so this is the left hand cylinder. This is the one that has the actuator on for the cables, the quadrant we call it. And if you look in here, the power valve is actually in two halves and under all this, well, basically garden that's now embedded itself in that cap head, there is an allen key bolt, which is what we call a cap head. It looks about a bit like a four millimeter to me. And you can see 
just how much movement there is. Look at that. That is actually quite, oh, geez, up and down, but even worse. Look at all that movement. That was the problem. Okay, number four, Allen key. Now we can't just turn that because obviously what's going to happen is Mr. Power Valve is just going to turn with it. So we're going to have to hold this end. Now this power valve in here is scrap, so I can do whatever I want at the end of here, so I'll just use some more grips. But for you guys, if you're going to reuse your power valve, you can be really careful now. And you can see, before I take it out, you can see all the wear on the, the contact point of the left-hand power valve, especially under here. Look, this is absolutely horrendous how worn it's got there. And that was basically meant that the quadrant was was badly positioned and it wasn't controlling the power valve properly. So ultimately it wasn't fully opening, i.e. raising, and wasn't fully closing either. There we go. That wasn't too tight. In fact, that was very loose. I'll give you all the torque settings for this as we go along. Okay, so that's the bolt out. I'm going to need that. Get rid of that for a minute. And now we can remove this little clip. Now this basically runs in a groove on the inner bush and that holds the inner bush in place. Sort of locates it so to speak. And we're going to need that again as well so let's not lose that. Put that down there. Thank you. Right. Let me get rid of that little plate. And again we're going to need that so let's not lose that either. Okay, so next job is to extract the power valve. So if we give that a little bit of a tug, there's the left hand bush with its o-ring called in carbon deposits. That's basically the power valve will split in half now. If you can see that down there. See that inside the cylinder? There we go. Okay, so that's one half of the power valve, and then the other half should, in theory, come out with this bush here. Might need to give it a bit of a tap, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Excellent. Okay, so this is now the right-hand bush of the left-hand cylinder and the power valve. And you can see all the carbon deposits built up on that power valve, which again is going to affect performance. Okay, so that's basically how your head, sorry, your barrel should now look with the power valve removed. And you can see with the scalloping, you've got to bring the power valve out in halves, one half either side. Otherwise, just going to jam and you can see here look where that power valve has been scoring into the barrel down here because that bush has got all that wear on it it's created a bit of a lip there yeah it's not so good actually but hopefully those new bushes will put everything back to as it should be again so i'm going to give that a really good clean out both sides and then we can start fitting the new parts I'm just using some brake cleaner here to get all the, the old carbon deposits out and stuff. Get nice and clean. Just so we can inspect it for any more damage, hopefully. And I really mean hopefully there won't be any because we can't get any more barrels anyway. I had the, uh, the immense amounts of fun of doing a warrant of fitness on an RD250LC on Saturday. Yesterday, in fact. Man, that thing was good. It really gave me the encouragement to get this one back together. Oh, 
that's coming up pretty well actually. Very happy with that. So many rags on this job. Excellent. Okay, time for some new parts. Okay, well we've got a choice of two power valves, and I'm pretty sure this is the one here. So we'll just take the bushes off that one. Oop, back it together again, please. There they put all the crap on there, look. Okay, pull that one off. Come on, Misty, you can do it. Right, nice. Clean knot. Okay, so there's the power valve, and here's the new one. Oh, it comes with a new bolt. Awesome. So, old versus new. Cool. So, we need a couple of bushes. Now, these bushes are all different part numbers. So, we've got 1131E, 1131F, that's 0, 1, that's 0, 0, so there's definitely differences, but ah, oh, that's the end plate, of course, okay, don't need that, that's for the other cylinder, and, yeah, 29L, holy crap, totally different, so I think we'll have to pull them all out, and have a little look, see what's what. So we've got one there. And man, these parts, were, they took some serious finding. We've got, oh, that's a bit different, okay. Yep, one there. And here's another one. So we've got 1131F again. 1131F01, so we've got two of these. Oh, that makes it a bit easier. Okay, so there's two the same and one different. And that one is the outer. So I would suggest that we have one of those and one of those will go on the right hand cylinder. And that one and that one is for the left hand cylinder. Cool. Okay, so that one there looks like that one and that one there looks like that one now the only problem is i don't see any o-rings and we're going to need to replace these o-rings here look okay let's keep looking for parts there's three of these seals in the kit that we ordered so that seal goes in in there basically like that ah, okay just basically sits in now it tells us to cover everything in grease right let's get a bit of grease and we'll slap it in there put it around the outside These power valve seals take a real battering. And that needs to go in there like that. And that's basically it. Ha! Look what I've just found, or spotted. This is the top end gasket set, and it just happens to come with new power valve O-rings. That's what we need. So let's get those taken out of there, very carefully, because they're actually right next to the head gasket. Excellent. Well done, Ben. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Okay. 
Oh, there goes the glove. Right. What have we got in here? We've got more than what we need. We've got some little black ones as well. So let's not lose those. Three of those. Okay, one, two, three. No idea where they go at the moment, so let's put them somewhere safe. Put them in the quadrant for now. Right. So, O-ring seal goes on in the big groove there, look. So we'll put that in there. Oh, crap. Right, perfect. Bit of grease. If in doubt, put grease on it. That's what Yamaha say, pretty much. Looks like everything gets grease. Cool. Right, that's that one ready for assembly now. Okay, now to the one. There we go. So I'll pop some more grease on there. So now, we can bring back the barrel, let's put those with the other two out of the way for now, on the manual, okay, right, one cylinder, now this side, oh, I've got to split it, don't forget, so we'll just split that power valve Jeez, that was tighter than the one in the bike. Okay. That's our new bolt. We're going to use that. Okay. Watch out for the pins. Okay. Now, the end that takes the long bolt is between the two cylinders. That's pointing towards the right-hand cylinder. So that's going to go in there and it gets the seal like that. That's right. There we go. Just very carefully. And we're going to pop that in there. Make sure that that goes into the groove. There we go. Now we can put the bolt in. Now I'm not going to put any thread lock on it just yet because I might have to disassemble this again for now, but I'll just pop it in there for now. And then I'll pop the thread lock on once I know it's all good to go. Bit of grease. Yeah, not too much, hopefully. It'll only burn it off anyway. Right. Perfect. On the left-hand cylinder for this side here, which is the left-hand end of the uh, left-hand cylinder power valve, got another of these orange seals to go in. Plenty of grease. That's going to sit in there, like that, and that's going to go in there, like that.
it says to grease the threads not put copper paste on them well that's definitely greased okay in she goes now there'll be a torque setting for this uh, bolt power valve 7 newton meters Bolt number four. Yeah, seven newton meters for that. That really isn't very much, is it? Okay, so I've just used an eight mil spanner on that end of the power valve just to hold it. Just while I torque that to the whole tenacious seven newton meters. It should be ample to hold it. There we go, look. Okay, so seven newton meters on there as well. Excellent. Right, spins freely. Very happy with that. Cool. Okay. Okay, so it's time now for power valve number two. So that's the left hand cylinder done. This is the right hand cylinder. Now, the right hand cylinder has already been stripped. So I'll get rid of that. But now we know a bit more about it, because this is the first time I've done a TDR250, even though I used to own one. Oh, and Ben's cleaned this one out already, so that's good. Well done, son. You're genius. Okay, so. New power valve for this side. And all we need to do, just undo that again. There we go. Undo the big bolt because we've got to split it in half to get it into this into the cylinder. Go oh, enjoy doing videos. Videos are cool. Okay, now we can split that. Let's get both pegs in one. The circular one with the bolt head and the single flat goes between the two cylinders. That's the drive because there's a little plate that clips those two together. And that's the bush. That's going to go on this side here. So let's just pop the o-ring into that groove there, look. Let's get that on. Let me get that greased up. There we go. Okay. Bit of grease. Use the paintbrush. What the hell? And we'll use a stick for the inside. Okay. Excellent. Right, so that one will be going in there, and we'll just put some more grease actually on the power valve bit itself. Around there. And on that surface there where the seal's going to run. And the bush is going to run. Man, so much grease. Okay, we'll pop that into there. We'll put it in the fully open position because they go faster that way. <laughs> okay, and we get the bush and that's going to go in there like that, Mr. Young. Dum, 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 dum. There we go. And then we need another one of those orange colored seals. goes in there like that. And you've got to make damn sure that the lip goes in correctly. Okay. Now, on this side, let's just put the old grease around there. There we go. Okay, now we've got to line up those dowels again important otherwise it ain't gonna work there we go 
So that's the power valve now joined back together. And you can see down the exhaust port, look, it's all connected. Cool. Excellent. Now, this one, being the outer, only gets an O-ring. Okay, plenty of grease. Chickens are laying eggs. Right, so that then just pops over there and seals seals that one up somewhere. Be a bolt to hold that in. And the clip for that. I've got to find those, but you know, you get the general idea. Okay, so that's that one done, and here's the right hand cylinder, all good to go. Now obviously that's how they sit on the bike, and there's a metal, metal plate, like a little clamping plate, that goes between those two power valves and locks them in place. Now the one thing I've not done yet is put that bolt in there, look, let's do that now. Again, plenty of grease. Obviously these things will seize up, you can't get them out. So plenty of grease. Put that in there. Let's get it tightened up. Okay, got to hold that power valve still, so we'll just whip that cover off. So I've just removed the right hand bush of the right hand cylinder. So I can get me a little 8 mil, 8 mil spanner on there. Set my torque wrench to 7 mil again. There we go. Yep. Okay, so um, that's the two power valves installed as per the Yamaha specs, and I'll put you loads of diagrams and bits and pieces on the video for you. Um, I just want to take a look. I was a bit concerned, really, about how this seal, or the, this is one of the old ones, how these seals stay in place. Now, I've just cleaned up the old power valve and sort of learned a bit more about this now. The inner part of the seal here is a really tight fit on the power valve itself so that actually presses on there pretty tight and obviously on the newer ones it's even tighter and it rotates with the power valve and the sealing lip the sealing surface is this surface here and that seals against the actual um, part of the bush uh, in a diameter there look uh, and that sits you know on the shaft like that so that's basically why those seals don't flick off even though there's nothing really holding them in place they just sort of sit there perched on the end of the power valve which is it's a bit odd i always thought there'd be some kind of washer or retaining collar or something there for them now also looking at the old power valve and the amount of play it had you can see there look you can see the play that was in that that power valve and these weren't leaking any oil there was no two-stroke burnt two-stroke oil leaking down the outside of the cylinders, which you normally get when these get really bad. So there were no telltale signs for Ben to think, hang on a minute, what's going on? But the wear, I found quite surprising, the wear's not here in sort of the brass bush. That looks pretty, pretty intact, but the wear here, look on the power valve, man, that aluminium is really scalloped out. There's quite a significant step going on. And if I get the verniers, we can actually measure it just out of interest, you know. So if I measure across the original diameter first, oh, you're looking at about 17.21. And then we go across the, the point of maximum wear, geez, 16.97. So we've lost about 0 0.2, 0.3 of a mil, about 0.3 of a mil across that diameter due to wear. 
and essentially that's what you can see there look that's that movement and that movement was enough to cause the other power valve which may be slightly worse than this to hit the right hand piston and it clobbered it right on the edge here look you can see this one's actually been running in the in the barrel it's been catching on the barrel that's why it's so clean because of that play so the tolerances here are very very tight and once you start to get a little bit of movement like that or even less than that then really you know you've got to get these things fixed and get some new bushes put in there all in all it was a damn miracle the whole thing ran at all so there you go that's how to install new power valves new power valve bushes o-rings and seals to a YPVS system. Now this is on a TDR250. The same system would apply to an RZ250 or a, an RD250, an RD350, an RZ350. Golly, it's probably even the same system on the, uh, the phenomenal RD500 V4. Although I haven't worked on those uh, to any great degree. I um, hope you found it interesting and helpful. Um, I know there's not so many of these bikes around on the roads anymore, but watch this space because at the moment Yamaha are currently developing, and have developed actually, fuel injected two stroke engines. And I believe on the grapevine that the YZ250 is now available in the States fuel injected. Well done, Yamaha. That's going to give Two, two strokes, a whole new lease of life. And the reason for that is they don't pollute the environment anywhere near as much as they used to do. On the old two strokes, we used to get about 20% of the fuel unburnt out of the exhaust. We don't get that anymore. Not with fuel injection. It's far, far, far more economical. And as a result, we get to burn all the fuel, which means we go a lot faster. Okay, so that's why PVS... Um, installation of the power valves on a Yamaha two-stroke. That brings us to the end of this video. I'm doing this in bite-sized chunks. The next video is going to be installing those two barrels onto the uh, onto the engine of the TDR250. And uh, once they're on, then we're going to put the head on. And then once the head's on, then we're going to set up and adjust the power valve system. Okay. If you've got any questions or comments then please add them down the bottom and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please do, more the merrier. Click subscribe, but why not also turn on notifications? That way you'll get an email come through whenever I add any new videos. And to do that, just click on the little gear icon next to subscribe, and then you'll see a little line there that says turn on notifications. Okay crew, uh, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and you've been watching my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Cheers, over and out.